So hello everyone and welcome back to the Nesbitt Connection Podcast. Uh, First off, I want to thank you for your continued support. Uh, You know, the thing is it means the world to me when I hear so many people or I guess maybe see so many people, especially on social media, you know, saying how they enjoy the podcast and they're learning from it. And it's great to see the numbers are going up. There's more and more people actually that are, uh, you know, that that are, you know, listening to this podcast and hopefully I'm helping, uh, you know, to help you to grow your leadership skills and, and, uh, well, you know, get along with life because I'm going to tell you it's a crazy world out there. It uh, this is no kids game anymore. It's a crazy world out there. So I just I, I kind of thought um, for this month's podcast, I, I would kind of relate back to something that's maybe a little um, maybe we'll call it a little off topic, but yet I think at the same time I, I'm going to show you how much it relates to leadership. I would say probably about uh, close to 15 years ago now, I took up running. And the thing is that I absolutely love to run. It's one of those things that I am, if, if there's, I have very few regrets in my life, but if there was, if there, if I do have one regret, I just wish I would have started running back in my 20s as opposed to my 40s because I love it that much. However, I, I know I can't change the past, you know, yesterday ended last night. But, but I just want to share with you a little bit, you know, what I've learned about growing leadership skills, you know, with regards to running. OK, uh, the, the interesting thing is, is that, you know, when we want to say you know, invest in ourselves and maybe try to become better people, uh, it, it's a lot of work. You know, it, it, we got to kind of change from the ordinary and it's different. Uh, there's a chance people could maybe laugh at us. If you, know, if, we, if, if you go to work and you tell somebody that you're enrolling in some sort of a leadership course or you're reading a self-help book, chances are people might tease you and bother you about it. You know, I, I've seen it. I've witnessed it. And you know, truth be known, you know, many, many years ago, I might have did the same thing. So I, I know that that's a reality. But I just, I want to share with you, but, you know, the, 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 the funny thing is, like, the first time that I went for a run, uh, the, I, I waited till it was dark uh, so nobody could see me. And I also waited till my family was gone because, you know, again, remember, I got two daughters and a wife and all three of them will say have a good sense of humor and we all love to tease each other. So I went out one night when they weren't around and it was dark, nobody could see me and I absolutely fell in love with it. And I ran, I want to say two kilometers, uh, you know, this obviously it seemed like a hundred today, but I went about two kilometers and I felt absolutely wonderful. But, but the, the point I want to make here is that, you know, when I came home, I didn't bother stretching. You know, why would you listen to the experts? The experts don't know what they're talking about. You know, so I didn't bother stretching. And sure enough, you know, I had a hard time walking for a couple of days. So, you know, lesson number one, you know, I had to learn to listen to the experts. And, and I have a hard time with that. So needless to say, I, I, you know, if you want to talk about, you know, running and leadership, I think that's one of the first things we need to do is we need to sit back and we need to learn from the experts, the people that are in a leadership role. You know, we all have mentors and we sometimes don't even know our mentors. We've just maybe seen them online or we follow their books. Uh, but I think it's very important that we follow, you know, listen to the experts. You know, the, the next thing I want to kind of point out is that, you know, I just kind of kept going further and further and I fell in love with it. And I remember one time I went five kilometers and I was so proud of myself, you know, because it was a big thing, five kilometers. And, you know, that was until I met my neighbor, Mario, one day. And I said to Mario, I said, I see you went running. How far do you go? And he said, oh, I usually go 10 kilometers. And he told me the route. And I thought, oh, my God, how could anybody ever do something like that? You know, the, to me, 10 kilometers was just out of the question. But, you know, I kept at it, and I kept at it, and I kept at it, and I actually went 10 kilometers. You know, I have a cousin who I'm quite close to, and she's a runner and ran many marathons, and, and you know, she kind of got me into running, and she says, you know, Mark, she says, you should try a race. And I thought, well, I really have no desire to race. I don't you know. I'm just not that type of person. And she said, well, no, try it. She said, there's one in January. And she says, it's, you know, there's nobody around, that it's a good race to start in. And sure enough, she talked me into it. I signed up and I ran my very first 10-kilometer race. And I want to say it was like maybe the first or second week of January. It was cold. Oh, goodness, it was cold. And the thing is, is that I'd heard this before. And now I'm living proof that once you do one race and you get cheered on, you know, the, the bug bites you and you want more. You want more of that adrenaline rush at the finish line of the people cheering you on and and being able to pass somebody. It can become very addictive. 
And that's much the same when you get in a leadership role. You know, we like it when people cheer us on. We like it to pass other people. We like it to pass other companies. We like to pass competition. And it can be very addictive. Uh, you know, I fell in that trap and I know it. And it's a good thing. So I, I just, so then I, I did this 10 kilometer race and my cousin then says, well, she said, Mark, if you can run 10K, you can run a half, you know, you can run a half marathon. And I thought that was just completely ridiculous. You know, remember, I'd only been running maybe six months at the most. So she said, no, no, sign up for the half marathon. I'll help you. Uh, sure enough, you know, I signed up for the for this half marathon, and uh, it was a spring race in Ottawa, and it was May, and it was hot. And, you know, I really, you know, I, I wasn't into running enough. I didn't have all the electronic gadgets maybe like I have today. Okay, I got the Apple Watch today, and it tells you, you know, how fast you're going and your pace. Didn't have all that. And, and the interesting thing is, you know, I remember, I forget, even forget the guy's name, but he was an NFL football player, and he ran a half marathon, and I think it was an hour and 55 minutes. And I thought, well, if I can just beat this NFL player, I'll be happy. And, you know, the, the funny thing was is that, you know, I, I actually beat him by a couple of minutes. I, mean, I think my first mar half marathon, I was like an hour and 53 minutes. And, and I was hooked. I was absolutely hooked. Uh, and, the, and what kind of brought this up is I just finished, uh, not that long ago, actually. I just ran my, I think it's my 19th half marathon. And, and I love them. It's so addictive, and you know the satisfaction that you get from running, and of course, you know how it makes me feel as I keep going, and and, and some of the things I've been kind of keeping notes for this podcast for a while because to me, there's so many similarities in becoming a better runner, as there is in becoming a better leader, and I, I have these you know this couple of the high spots I want to hit today because I think they're so important, and you know and if we can all kind of understand these high spots. I really believe that, you know, we can become better leaders. We can obviously become better runners. If you learn what I've, you know, what I've learned, I think, you know, I started ground zero, right? And I was in my 40s. So the thing is, there's a couple of things I want to share with you. Like just recently, I want to say it was, I guess, the weekend before uh, that, this last half marathon. I was at one, it was hot and muggy and it was just, it was not a nice day. And we, we just had a really bad storm here in Ottawa, and there's trees down all over the place. So my normal running route that I take is usually it's a trail, like it's a, a gravel trail. It's beautiful. Well, of course, I go down this trail, and it's full of trees. So I had to kind of get off the trail and get on the street. And the funny thing was, I went across the street, and I trip and fell. And I really got smashed up pretty good. I smashed up my knee, and I just missed a sign. It was kind of almost, it's funny at the time, but I think the, the lesson to this is, is there was cars on the street, Yet nobody stopped to see if I was okay. And you see, that to me is normal. You know, when you fall, usually nobody's around. And, and if they are, people are around quite often, they don't care. And that's kind of the way it is with leadership. You know, we're going to trip and fall. And you know, sometimes people are going to see us. Sometimes people aren't. But you're going to find lots of times there's, necessary, you know, that there's quite often nobody there to help us. You know, we have to pick ourselves up and, and get going again. And, and, and sometimes it's not easy. And sometimes you've got to run with blood running down your knee and with torn up shoes. And hey, believe me, it was a... And, and I kind of kind of funny when I come home. Of course, my wife sees me and she flips out. But it's, it's kind of funny. But, you know, nevertheless, I ran home with a sore knee. And, and that quite often is what happens in leadership. We have to keep going no matter how much pain, no matter how many times we can get heart broke. You know, we got to keep going. You know, I, I firmly believe... One of the problems today, we'll say with young leaders in particular, is they've never had to work with a rotary phone. I can remember clear as a bell, many, many years ago, the first time Garth Brooks came to Ottawa on a rotary phone trying to buy tickets. You know, you have to dial the number. And of course, every time you got the wrong number, you had to start over again, hang up. And, and, and in those days, when you went to call for concert tickets, you may have to call, I swear, a hundred times before we could get through to somebody answering the phone. So, of course, you learn persistence. And I really don't believe, you know, a lot of kids today have never had to learn persistence that you got from using a rotary phone trying to get tickets to Garth Brooks. Crazy as it sounds, you surprise how something like that makes you stronger. You know, one of the things that I've also noticed from running, I've had a bad back for many years. And that's one of the reasons I actually started running it because my back just been, it's been bad for years. And the, the thing is, is that I have learned more than anything is that the pain in my back is not usually caused by my back. It's usually something else. It's usually the, my hip flexors or my hamstrings or something like that. And that's typical, you know, when we're leading. If there's something going wrong and something's not going the way it is, usually it's not the problem that we think it is. 
you know, we have to look to see what the root cause is. And boy, that can be really hard to do because, you know, sometimes it's really easy to walk in somewhere, drive onto a job site and just be very critical and find something out, but that we don't maybe find the whole story. So I would encourage you, you know, you know, you got to look somewhere else. And the thing is, one of the things I also learned too is that, you know, the, 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 the thing is, is that, you know, the more I practiced, the faster I got. You know, I just kept pushing myself and I kept getting faster and I kept getting faster and kept getting faster. And then today I'm actually, you know, from my age, you know, when I'm in a race, typically I finish in the top 10%. So by no means am I the fastest there, but I'm typically in the top 10%. And the thing is, is one of the things that I've noticed over the years, nobody likes to get past. You know, you can be running on a trail somewhere and you'll come up on somebody as soon as they see that you're a field, you know, that you're behind them, they speed up. Nobody likes to get past. And, and, you know, I have to share something with you. When I first started running, I had no idea, that, we'll call it the makeup of the race, the people that were actually in the race. So in Ottawa, I'm not sure what it's like where you are, but in Ottawa, well over 50% of the runners are actually females. Okay, uh, so that, that being said, there's some fast female runners out there and they, they beat me all the time and sometimes I pass them. And, and this is not a, you know, the, the, but, I'm, but I'm a guy, I notice females, I'm sorry, but I do. And, and the thing is, is that one of the things that I found is, is, that, is that I got faster, I would finish near the front of the race. And the thing is, is when you finish near the front of the race, the people around you tend to be in better shape. So it's like this, the better I got, the faster I got, the better the people were around me at the finish line. And I think that's so important if you're in a leadership role. If you want to become better, the first thing you need to do is you need to become better so you can surround yourself with people as good as you that can keep up to your pace. And that's one of the things that I have learned. You know, come a number of years ago before all this COVID nonsense happened, I joined a gym and I used to go there all the time. And I typically just ran on the treadmill. Yeah, that, that's because I just love to run. And I get on the treadmill, and I'm going to tell you, when you get on a treadmill, I'm not so certain there's anything more boring than running on a treadmill. It's like watching, uh, it's like watching John Deere paint dry. I swear to God, it, it's just that boring. And you don't think you're going anywhere. And it's a lot of work. And, and sometimes, you know, when we're in a job, you know, it might feel like the same way, that you're working, 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 not going anywhere. So one of the things that I learned if I was going to run a treadmill, and I was literally cover the screen of the treadmill with a towel. Because if I couldn't see it to get distracted, I seemed to get along a lot better. I didn't notice it. And I'd be listening to an audio book, and I'd get kind of into the audio book, and I didn't notice it as much. And you see, that's quite often what we have to do. We have to be careful when we're on a job, and we're trying to get ahead, and we're trying to grow. We need to be careful that we don't get distracted with the boredom. And we have to keep our mind active and keep our eye on the ball. You know, that's what we have to do. We got to keep our eye on that finish line as to where we're going. And the thing is, you know, I'll give an example. You know, sometimes as you get old, you notice this. My chiropractor told me a long time ago, he says, you know, Mark, he said, I've never seen anybody like you. He says, but he says that it seems like the more you abuse your body, he says, the better you feel. And I said, well, why is that? He said, it's like this. He says, motion equals lotion. He says, as you keep going, you get your joints loosened up. And he says, motion equals lotion. And you see, that's the same thing. If we want to try and get ahead and try and go, we want to grow ourselves, we need to do the same thing because motion equals lotion. And don't ever forget that, you know, because I think that's so true. You know, one of the things, and you can probably tell by looking at me if you see me in person, is no matter how hard I run, I cannot seem to outrun my fork. You know, I've got a sweet tooth. There's nothing better than, especially in the summer, boy, there's nothing better than ice cream or gelato. I'm, I'm, I'm hooked on it. And the thing is, I swear, if I did not have such a sweet tooth and, and you know, that love food so much, I'd probably be 30 pounds lighter. So the thing is, I can't outrun my fork. And you see, that's much the same way if we want to, you know, grow our leadership skills. Sometimes if we want to work on ourselves, sometimes the first thing we need to do is learn to limit, we'll call it some friendships, relationships, and who we spend our time with. You know, the last thing we want is somebody kind of say, hey, you're never going to get ahead. Why are you wasting your time doing that? You know, and sometimes it can be family. I've seen it and I've witnessed it. It's happened to me. So like I say, sometimes, you know, we got to learn we can't outrun our fork, but sometimes, you know, we can't outrun the people we associate with because we want to make sure that we associate with winners, you know, people that are going to cheer us on. 
And one of the things that I don't know that I've learned a long time ago is I'll wake up. Well, actually, my my wife and I had this conversation this morning. I said I'm not looking forward to getting older. I you know I said, here I am now 58 and I get up in the morning and I'm stiff. Like I mean, it takes me a half an hour to get warmed up. And she kind of laughed. Said, Yeah, I know the feeling. It's not just you. And we just kind of joked about it. But one of the things that I have learned, if I am stiff or sore, to go for a run. That's the easiest and the best thing to do. And that's the same thing. You know, if we're not feeling real good sometimes. I heard a long time ago that if you were going to, say, have a nervous breakdown or if you were having a bad day, go and work with somebody that's in worse shape than you are. Go and try and help them. And if you try to help them, guess what? You're going to help yourself by accident. And, and I swear by that. I live by that. Because the thing is, you know, I get my mind off of me and I start helping somebody else. And you'd be surprised how that turns my day around. So again, if you're in pain, go do something. Get off, you know, get off the couch, get out of the office chair, whatever you have to do. You know, we have to do it. And and and, and I've often made this joke too. Nobody can train for me. No, but my wife can't do my running for me. I have to do it myself. And that's the same thing. If I want to grow my leadership skills, if I want to get ahead, if I want to become a better person, I have to do the hard work myself. Nobody can do it for me. I have to do the hard work myself. And that's, you know, I think that's quite important. You know, I have to do the work. And of course, as I get cheered on and I get feel better, you know, you cannot believe, we'll say, the high you get from running a race. You know, when you're out there and then there's, it was so beautiful. You know, when I did this spring race in Ottawa here you know, a few weeks ago, to see Ottawa back alive again. You know, having the kids standing on the sidewalk, putting their hands out so you could slap their hands and, and, and the homeowners at their hand and your ice cubes. And you just cannot believe how a total stranger, you know, can, can, can cheer you on. And we have that same ability with other people. You know, and I've started doing this myself as much as I can lately because uh, I'll give you an example. I went to a bike store not long ago because... I thought you know, my, my wife and I will enjoy going for a bike ride together. There was this young gentleman at this bike shop and he was just so good and so friendly and, and so professional. And I don't think this guy was 20. Now, I've got to admit, but my age, I sometimes think people that are 15 or 20, I miss the age. Like, you know, I'm not as good as he used to be. But this guy was young. He was very young. Put it this way. I was old enough to be his dad by far. And he was so good. I just said to him, you know, you're doing such a good job. You're going to go places in life, kid. And, you know, that just put a smile on his face. You know, so here I was, total stranger, telling him how good he was, and he was going to go someplace in life. We all have that ability. And believe me, today, there, you know, there's so many kids will say, well, you know, they're suffering from depression and anxiety and, and, and stuff from this, you know, because they never got to see anybody for how many months. You know, they need to hear that from us. And we have the ability to do that. And, of course... You know, sometimes I, I, it, it's interesting that they have these little foam rollers and, and massage sticks and whatnot. And you'd be very surprised how they work. But the first thing I have to do is I have to use it. You know, it, it's, as much ambition as I have, I'd love to run. I don't like using these massage sticks and whatnot. But boy, when I do the work, I feel so, so much better. And, and that's exactly how it works. When we do the work, when we work on ourselves we feel so much better. But of course, the first thing we need to do is to learn to work on ourselves. And boy, that could be really hard. You know, I, I just want to point something out here. I think this was just really ironic. When I went to do this uh, race here a little bit ago, my daughter's boyfriend and I ran together. Uh, I, we didn't train together. It's just he was in the race. I was in the race. We just kind of stood together at the start line. And he's a really fine young gentleman, a professional young guy, and we're really happy that you know that he's you know seeing our daughter. But 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 I just want to point out when they went to to do the at like every sporting event, they went to play O Canada. Okay, and here's a guy, this young gentleman. He's I think he's mid. I guess he's late twenties, and he he was wearing a hat to run a race. And what I thought was most impressive was when they played O Canada. I'm going to say less than 50% of the people there paid attention to the national anthem. And, and, I, and I thought that was just, you know, just, just wrong. I'm sorry, but that's absolutely wrong. But this young gentleman, he took his hat off and put his hat in his chest. You know, the first thing I told my daughter is this guy's a keeper. You know, anybody that shows respect for the country like that, that guy's a keeper. And, and I just want to point out, we can learn 
from people, those little, you know, we have, we'll say, learning opportunities every day. You know, if we only want to sit back and learn from them. You know, and I, and I share this all the time. Actually, this afternoon, I have a, a keynote talk I have to give for this company. And I, you'd be certain I'm going to share. We have learning opportunities every day. It's whether or not we actually want to pay attention and learn. That's up to us. Because I'm going to tell you, I see it every day. So, you know, that, that, it, it, I, I cannot get over what, you know, how much I, 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 I've learned from running. Uh, there, to me, sometimes if I'm working on a presentation or like I say, this keynote talk, you, you would be very surprised how I'll just kind of put in the old Bose earbuds and go for a run, um, sometimes in the middle of the day, whatever the case may be, and I'll listen to an audiobook and I'll come home and I, I, I cannot remember and you cannot believe how much stuff that I'll write down that I learn going for a run. You know, I, I, I don't listen to music. The only time I listen to music is if I'm a race situation, we'll say. But I listen to audiobooks. And, and I'll give an example. I typically try to run a minimum of 150 kilometers a month. And I, I, I don't know how many hours that is. That's probably, say, 15 hours a month. Uh, you know, th that, that being said, you know, by the time you start, the stretch, and after, that's a minimum of 20 hours a month that I can learn just by going for a run. And you cannot believe when you're out there just running around this neighborhood and whatnot and, and you hear something, you're in a totally different state of mind. And it, you'd be surprised what you can learn just going for a run. And sometimes that's what we need to do. You know, when the heat is on and, and, and you know, believe me, I, I've been in that rat race for a lot of years. And I, got, I don't miss it. Trust me, I do not miss it. But when that rat race is on, Sometimes, you know, we just got to go for a walk. Sometimes I used to just go for a drive. You know, I'd go for a drive, put it on an audio book or a podcast or something and kind of cool off and come back and change the way I look at things. Because that's the only thing I have control of in this whole world is my thoughts. And, you know, we need to make sure that we, uh, you know, pay as much attention as we can, you know, to changing our thoughts. When things get bad, you know, when, you know, when we're losing and it hurts and whatnot, that's when we got to change our thoughts. You know, we quit thinking about it, go do something else. Like I say, the best medicine I ever found was helping somebody else. So thank you very much for the podcast. Please do rate us so we can get some more listeners. And again, I want to thank you for your continued support. You know, I, I truly love helping people. You have no idea how good life is today because I get to help people. So again, if we can just be a little bit better tomorrow than we are today, that's all we need. Thank you.